Hey. Hey. I'm the year 2020. Oh yeah? I've been looking forward to meeting you. Well, for many, many reasons, it took me a while, but I am finally to the point where I am ready to bring all of you into my 2020. Now, I originally thought that I could cover the entire first half of the year in one episode, uh, just really sum it up and fly through it. But the more I dug into all of the footage that I had on my computer, the more I organized it and took notes on what had happened, uh, the more I, I don't think that's going to be possible. I think uh, this, this will take at least two episodes. Uh, but basically, um, I have a bunch of notes. I took a lot of notes. And I'm just uh, going to start talking. And uh, we'll see what comes of it. Uh, what I want to do to start out this journal is to kind of lay out uh, a broad calendar of the first half of the year. And I created this really funky graphic and, and it took a while and I really like it. So I'm probably going to use it as often as I can. Um, but uh, two things I want to lay out there because I think laying them out first as part of the framework will, will be a lot easier than just going month by month through this calendar and then bringing them up when they come up and try to explain things from there. Anyway, it, it's in my head, it makes sense. Okay. Uh, and the first one is the coronavirus, the big CV that uh, uh, has affected everybody. Uh, uh, of course, it, it kind of, uh, the, the consequences of it kind of rolled out across the world and across our country. Uh, in Oregon, they were concerned about it in February. And in early March came the first uh, government ordinances from our governor, our illustrious governor, uh, about um, shutting things down. I'm going to really kind of mark it on the calendar as, uh, as kind of being official on March 23rd, because that was the day where she shut down pretty much business. Um, and, and that included gyms. So um, March 23rd was uh, Oregonians' last opportunity to get in a workout in a gym for several weeks. So that's where I'm going to mark that on the calendar. Before that, it really didn't affect me. The other thing that I want to put on the calendar is my job. You may remember that, I think it was episode 25, I mentioned getting full-time employment at a local news studio in September of 2019. Well, I've been fired. Just seven and a half months after taking on that job, it was over. And why did I get fired? Well, there is a, a technical reason that was put on the HR write-up of the incident. Um, but foundationally, in terms of my personality and the motivation, it's because I got bored. I got real bored. I want to briefly describe it for you, just so you kind of understand that. And uh, a lot of you watching really are, are kind of my online friends, and this is kind of my way of just talking to my circle of friends and getting it off my shoulders or chest or head or whatever. Um, so let's just, I'm going to try to quickly go through it. Um, I, I've actually already tried recording it once and it was way long. So I'm going to just, uh, 
I'm going to move through this and try to hit just the details. So this is not a 20 minute episode about why Brian got fired. Here we go. I had already been working eight years as a part-time on-call cameraman for the production arm of the local cable company. And basically that meant when they were having an event that they were going to broadcast live, whether it was a local high school football game or something else, and they needed people to create that broadcast, I was one of the people on the list, and my job was running one of the cameras. Uh, There came a point in September of 2018 where they needed a temporary floor director for their news program in the studio and the floor director is the guy behind the cameras basically making sure everything goes right during the broadcast. By September of 2019 they were looking at a significant restructure of their news program and to keep it short that they they were turning that floor director position into a full-time position. Uh, So facing me was an opportunity to gain full-time employment at the best hourly rate I've ever been paid in my life plus health benefits and free internet and vacation pay and and other perks as well. Which uh, raises the question, well, who wouldn't jump at an offer like that? And the answer is me. What had been interesting when I first started it in September of 2018, by, you know, eight or nine months later, um, it was very monotonous and repetitious. The luster was gone. And now I was being being asked to do that full time. And the hours for the position would be 3.30 p.m. to midnight. So to take that job on, I would also be losing my evenings at home. So I was being asked to sign on uh, for a job that I found extremely boring at this point um, and to give up my nights to do it. I thought for weeks about that. And I took the job for two reasons. One, I needed to pay bills. And two, it would get my foot in the door. It would get me an opportunity to hopefully start impressing upon people there that I I can run cameras. I, I had, at that point, 29 years of video camera and editing experience. And I had a four-year college degree on doing that as well. Uh, I am a prize-winning short film director. Um, I warned my supervisor of nine years at that point. I just want to make it clear. It's been the same guy. We're, I still consider him a friend. Um, and this is one of the reasons why he really wanted me to take the full-time job, because he knew I could do it. Um, I warned him. I, I said, and I quote, this job is already tedious, monotonous, and artistically soul-crushing. <laughs> um, I said, I'm going to need something from the company. This is, you know, most jobs are kind of a, I mean, there's kind of a given two way. The employee does his job and that's how he shows the company he wants to be there. And the company pays him and that's how they show him they want him there. Um, I said it's more than the paycheck for me. I need hope that this is going to evolve into something creative. You've got about a year to give me some hope. Um, The short version of this is in seven and a half months, they gave me none, no hope whatsoever. Uh, Nobody in that entire building lifted a finger to indicate to me that they really wanted me to stay, that they wanted me on the team. Um, let me, let me, uh, describe kind of how this went from 3.30 to midnight. That was my shift Monday through Fridays. Um, but my actual assignment was 4.30 to 7 and about 10.30 to 11.45. Over four hours of my eight-hour shift, I had no assignment whatsoever. No editing, no camera work, no writing. Nobody had anything to offer me. So five nights a week, 7 to 10, I was sitting in either my cubicle or the break room solving the Sudokus in the newspaper, um, reading a book. And then I noticed something. Uh, Two of my co-workers were in the same boat. There were three of us who had to stay through the night doing nothing until the 11 o'clock news. And I noticed that they were actually disappearing for about two hours every night. And eventually I discovered they were each just going to their homes and doing whatever they wanted to do on the clock. Because nobody cared. The supervisor left at 7. None of the anchors, nobody preparing for the 11 o'clock news cared one bit. 
So after a month of being the good boy, after a month of being the new employee and trying to play by the book, I said nuts to that. If nobody cares, I'm going to go do things. I went to the gym. I started working out. I had a half hour lunch, but I'd go to the gym for two hours. So about for about an hour and a half of every workout for that period, um, this corporation out in Wisconsin that owned us was paying me to work out. Uh, I invited my wife to dinner. And we'd stay out for an hour and a half, two hours, two and a half hours, just sitting, talking, enjoying each other's company. So, um, you know, there's a corporation out in Wisconsin that was paying me to eat out with my wife. Um, on two separate occasions, I went to the movies. I found one that was starting at 7.30 and ending before 10. So I went. Um, one of them was 1917, which, by the way, is a fantastic movie. You, you might want to see it. I had the benefit of being paid $34 to sit and watch it. Um, yeah, so there's probably people watching this going, Brian, that's a heck of a cushy job, getting paid at least three hours a night to do whatever you want. What happened? <laughs> um, it goes back to my wanting to do something. I, you could pay me $50 an hour for 40 hours a week to sit and watch movies. And eventually I would say, I don't like this. I quit. I want to do something. I want to make a movie. Uh, I have a life dream of making a motion picture. Sitting in a building, doing nothing, or even going and working out or running some errands on company time. Kind of cool, yeah. You kind of had that freshman, you know, this is awesome, I'm getting paid. Um, but eventually it just, it got tedious. I did start using the cubicle area that I discovered, uh, the, the main cubicle area where I think the salespeople worked, um, they all left at five. That part of the building was unused. And so on nights where I didn't want to get bundled up and go to the gym in the cold, I would start doing my workouts there. Simple body weight workouts, uh, you know, body weight squats and push ups and lunges and stuff, things I could do there. And as time went on, I noticed that no one ever came to that cubicle section. No one else way down at the other end of the building preparing for the 11 o'clock news ever ventured down to there. So I got more relaxed about it. I would use that part of the building for uh, progress checks, uh, footage uh, of myself, of, of whatever muscle group I was working, um, so that I could see see it working, see if there was visible progress there. Uh, and and once in a while, something that could probably con be considered as, uh, as, I don't know, horseplay? Over the past couple years of browsing on Instagram, I noticed a rise in the popularity of something called the elevator selfie. And yet here I am, as a 10-year weightlifter, I've never taken an elevator selfie. And now I work in a location that has an elevator. So I decided that it was time. And then on May 6th, I was called into my supervisor's office for a conference call with the Wisconsin HR department and discovered that some of my shenanigans had inadvertently been posted to Instagram in a very public way. Um, I thought I had pushed a button making sure that it was private only to my particular fan base, uh, and that was not true. Um, they were particularly disturbed by the fact that uh, my showing off uh, included... Uh, unblurred corporate logos in the background, clearly indicating where and when this was taking place, uh, which could potentially affect their reputation, uh, blah, 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 blah. Um, and so um, I was terminated in the very classic way of get a cardboard box, uh, you, you need to clear out your desk right now, hand over your badge, and we will escort you to your car to make sure you don't go postal. Um, so that was the end of that. Um, I, I, I have to say, I don't miss the job. The paycheck was nice. I kind of regret losing that. The people were a lot of fun. I have no hard feelings for anyone there. Gladly work with any of them again. They were a great team to be around. Um, but the job itself, I could feel it. I could feel it week after week was crushing my spirit. I, I told them I needed hope. I volunteered on multiple occasions. There were times I overheard the news director talking to one of his co-workers. All of our cameramen are out on assignment. We need someone to go get footage of this or that event or building. Who do we have? I was right there in the room and I said at least two separate occasions, 
I have 20 years experience running a video camera. I could go get that for you. And both times he flat out ignored the offer. Um, there were other such situations where I offered. I tried to help. I tried to get them to open up the tiny little box they had put me in in the corner, labeled floor director, and, and actually let them benefit from 29, 30 years of video and film experience. And every time I was shot down, they would have, they would have lost me in four and a half more months anyway. I would have said, this is nuts. I, I'm dying here. So there's that. And that is the foundation for my 2020, which now, finally, we get to get into. I think the best way to approach this entire six-month block is uh, less chronologically and more thematically. Uh, so let's bring up that awesome graphic that I spent hours making, and uh, let's start filling it in. And the very first thing is the subject of workouts. Golly, 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 golly.